And continuing our Commitment 2016 coverage tonight, the Sacramento mayor's race is heating up. Three candidates have now officially declared their campaigns. They include former state Senate President Pro Tem Daryl Steinberg, former boxer and current bail bondsman Tony Lopez, and Sacramento Mayor Pro Tem Angelique Ashby. And Angelique Ashby is here live in our studio tonight. This is part of our effort to give all of the candidates equal time, so welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. We'd love to start with news of your city council district. Sure. And one of the biggest headlines in your district recently has been the lifting of the building moratorium with the levees uh, shored up in the area. Yeah. So bring us up to date on what changes you're now seeing uh, now that construction can can begin again. Well, in December of 2008, Natomas fell into a de facto building moratorium, really before any of the council members that are there now were on the council. And ever since, we've been fighting our way out of that moratorium. And the good news is, with that lift, we are seeing development. A school bond measure was passed, which I helped lead last year. And so we have a school about halfway built out there. We have uh, hundreds of homes coming in. And we have a lot of discussion around some medical facilities, uh, a, a mental health facility that will be out there for folks that are aging and need a little bit of assistance. Um, and, you know, just really exciting projects, businesses coming online and some growth and jobs out there in Natomas. Can you be specific about the businesses that you're seeing? Yeah, you know, they get a little bit, they don't really like their names thrown out there too much, but I would just say that what, what we're really seeing is a focus on some of the needs that uh, have existed for a while, but we haven't been able to address because we couldn't build a standalone building. So for example, like a doctor's office, mm -hmm. you, you really need to build that. A lot of our local providers have their own model and we'll be able to build some of those now, which will get services to people out in Natomas that have been driving out of the community. Another big opportunity is the redevelopment of Sleep Train Arena. We have some video actually. Earlier this month, we had an exclusive tour of the new Golden One Center. King's president, Chris Granger said the old arena will likely become a mix of retail and housing. So do you have specifics? What is going to happen to that property? And uh, if you don't have specifics, what's your dream? What's your vision for that site? Yeah, well, you know what's really great about having the Kings as partners is that they have made a commitment to do what the community wants to do moving forward. And my end game goal for that site is very simple jobs, high-end jobs for folks in our region. We want that to be an economic engine, not just for Sacramento, but for the whole area. Uh, there is a big push for medical services in Natomas. We did try to get Kaiser Hospital out there and fell a little bit short, although they landed in the rail yards, and I think that's yeah. a good spot for them as well. But what you'll probably see out there is some type of tech campus, a tech user, some high-end user. We're trying not to narrow ourselves so far into a corner that we are only looking for one entity, but a large economic engine with high-end jobs for the region. The Kings are committed to that end and have certainly taken steps in that direction. What kind of timeline? Well, the Kings are still playing out there for right. another year, so we can't knock the building Less down. Less than. Yeah, so we're going to need gonna need a little bit of time there. And then once they're out, it is written into the deal that we'll knock down the old arena if it's not part of the reuse plan and start from there. But but the Kings haven't waited. They've already started the environmental impact reports, which requires that they hire consultants, and some of the traffic studies and analysis are being done currently. Okay, we want to talk to you quickly about the mayor's race. We mentioned yeah. three candidates in the race right now, including you. Uh, we were talking during the break, and you said maybe we'll see more, more yeah, people jump you never in, but know. you don't have any names. Let's talk specifically about uh, former Senate President Daryl Steinberg. You have worked so closely with him on a number of projects. Has your relationship changed now that you are political opponents? Uh, I'm sure the relationship has changed. I still have respect for him and I know he has respect for me, but you know, I'm focused on why I'm the best candidate for mayor. If I thought one of the other candidates was better than me, I wouldn't be in the race. I think I have a lot to offer Sacramento. I have been mayor pro tem or vice mayor of this city for the past four years straight. That seems like a lot of time to practice. I've led a lot of council meetings, made a lot of decisions, fought hard for every corner of our city, particularly my own district. When you look at my record in my own district, I think that the other parts of the city would like to replicate some of those things. For example, I reduced crime in my district by 48% in my first term. 
I'm pretty sure that every corner of this city would love to see those types of results and I'd love to put that type of work and effort in for them. There's a reason why the firefighters and the police officers are in my corner. It's because I understand that public safety is the top priority of this city and I want to focus on it. Okay, and I know you've been working to get that message out to all the residents yeah. of Sacramento. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. Studio.